Hey, Chris, this is uh, calling from the Ralph Partying Circle. I haven't called in a while. Hey, buddy. How's it going, man? Uh, basically, uh, Chris, I wanted to ask you, because last time I was on here, um, you know, we were talking, I believe it was when Piccolini had just called or whatever, and uh, you said that you allowed me entrance into the ethno state. Uh, now, let me ask you, because technically I'm a white Cuban, and from what I understand of the ethno state from Richard Spencer, I, I heard him talking that there'll be different cultures in the ethno state. Um, which means like a German, a uh, English, a Spanish ethno state as well. Um, so if you could elaborate a little bit on that, because I, I, I'm very curious. Well, I don't, I don't know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what exactly Richard Spencer was saying. Um, <clears throat> but you know, white Hispanic became a category here at some point because uh, the United States federal government is trying to phase white people out. And so I'm sort of like uncomfortable with that categorization, if I'm entirely honest with you. Now, I know you. I think you're a good guy. It's not That's not something that I have a problem with you. Um, and by the way, you know, as I said to another guy, you know, somebody called in earlier and said, well, you know, it, it has to be 100% white. And I'm like, that's probably not going to work out. There's got to be some compromise to it. I don't know. I mean, maybe the best thing that we can do is accept some number of, you know, I don't know, white anti uh, white is white anti-communist Cuban Hispanics. I don't know what the the exact terminology would here would be. Maybe the best thing that we can do is that, right? Um, but that is a mm -hmm. political calculation to be made when we're closer to our goal, I guess. Right. Now, just uh, like, so you're aware, like a lot of times, like um, people like misconstrue us, you know, they think that we're just like, kind of like the you know, I, I would say that the new Cuban Hispan, the new Cubans that are coming are definitely the, the worst kind. But the very first uh, breed, the very first wave, uh, what's considered conservative Cuban, was actually the. It's called the Cuban Miracle. They even call it the Cuban Miracle that they, by 1980, they had over 10,000 businesses here in Miami, and they were pretty much responsible for the creation of Miami and the expansion that Miami went uh, into Latin America. So it's not like we're dealing with like the most, you know, like how people think of Hispanics as like, you know, the mestizo type. You know, these are definitely people that had came from Spain, Spain that had uh, you know migrated from Spain to Cuba and are you of European descent. And, you know, that's why I was saying that, you know, it's kind of, you know, from what I was understanding, I don't want to misconstrue uh, Richard Spencer's views, but. Uh, that the ethno state would have different languages, different cultures, and different customs. So why wouldn't there be, let's say, a Spanish version of uh, in the ethno state? Well, I, I, because it wouldn't. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what's being got at here. If you're talking about a white ethno state, it's for white people, right? And so that's sort of the purpose of it. Now, as right. I said to a prior caller, you know, if there's some degree of compromise, fine. But I, I don't think that Hispanics are white per se. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that because uh, that's like the misconception, I think, that a lot of people have is that, you know, Cubans aren't white, for example. And that's, you know, especially the first generation, like right now in Cuba, for example, it's an African culture mostly because there was a there was a war with Angola that a lot of Africans were brought uh, from Angola to Cuba and they adopted the culture. And now it's mostly African centric, I guess you could say. Um, now, but before it was more European, as most of them migrated from Spain to uh, to Cuba, and you know it was actually during the time period before Castro it actually had higher income per capita than most of Europe. So and, it was a and, very, very, right. very successful. And so, nation. as and as it de as it as it was defiled under communist rule, it became darker and darker, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And right. that's you know now the people that now there. It's it's you know you go to Cuba and it's a shame you know it's mostly black um, and that as in the the people that are here in Miami for example are mostly white though but they do speak Spanish you know but they're mostly white. Well, you know, I look. I'm not involved in your everyday life to know what everybody's like. I mean, I know other people have called in to counter signal this, and what they say is that. Um, you know, you, you come here and, okay, we're escaping a communist regime and we're very uh, enthusiastic about the American, you know, lifestyle, whatever. I know, I, know, I don't remember exactly who you are to pick you out of a lineup right now, but I know I spoke to a bunch of guys when I was down there, right, who are, who are uh, I, I believe mm -hmm. most of them were Cuban. And some of you guys looked whiter than others, right? And so, okay, I mean, 
I, I'm not, I'm not, I have no idea how to answer this, frankly. Okay. Uh, I, I am <laughs> under the impression that, the, that uh, Cubans are Hispanic peoples and that, okay, maybe some of you are closer to white and maybe there's uh, greater or lesser degrees of European uh, DNA coursing through your veins, depending on who I'm talking to. And maybe depending on the circumstances, some of you get in, some of you don't, uh, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't know the answer to this question. We're nowhere near the goal, you know, but I, I am not I am not exactly anxious to expand the definition of white in accordance with what the United States federal government is doing, because that's part of the white genocide, frankly. Right. They don't they don't differentiate whites and Hispanics at all in FBI crime statistics. Right. So so when when these people throw around, you know, oh, whites are the biggest problem or whatever like this, what they're doing is they're lumping whites and Hispanics in and then sort of like ignoring certain things about the blacks in order to blame problems in society on white people. Like when you hear people say like, oh, the majority of you know welfare recipients in America are white. Well, that's not true. It's just that fucking Hispanics and whites are being lumped into the same statistics and therefore uh, we're, we're doing it that way. The, you know, when, when we try to talk about you know, whites becoming a minority in the United States by 2040. The truth of the matter is it's probably a lot further along than that because a lot of Hispanics are identifying as white, right? Jews are identifying as white. And so, like, the, like the, the expanding definition is an effort of deconstructing whiteness, and I'm not a big fan of it. No, yeah, I agree. Uh, trust me, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm not a big fan of it as well. It's like the, like, down here the media, like, really doesn't, like the uh, leftist media really doesn't just dis dislikes us in a sense. They even wrote an article that Trump won because of us, you know? Right. So it's, it, they really dislike us in a sense. So, I mean, you know, and having people that are pro free markets like ourselves, you know, pro, you know, anti-communism, uh, I think is, is definitely something that's essential in a national state, you know? Yeah, I look. I agree with you, and I think look the, the whole the whole point of me coming down there was for the Rothbardian circle, so I could fucking argue against open borders and fucking make a fool out of Adam Kokesh. So I know that you and I see eye to eye, right? Ideologically, like if if I were uh, if if I had not gotten into the whole uh, in, into the whole ethnic fucking conflict thing, you know, you and you, you, and we still are on the same side for the most part, right? Um, but you know, as far as the def the definition, the policy, of the ethno state, like I said, I'm just really hesitant to open up that definition. And you know, maybe somebody understands this shit better than me, right? Because I mean, look, when I was locked up, I was in there with uh, with uh, uh, Ramos, right? Ramos, a Puerto Rican guy, who got out there, he got arrested for fucking kicking ass with us, right? And so you know, I'm like, all right, you know, <laughs> I just say we're all white or whatever. He like initially felt compelled to point out that he wasn't. And I'm like, look, you're white now. Okay. Just, just, just get on with it. I'm not going to fucking start making diversity statements uh, because, because you're the Puerto Rican guy who got locked up for being a white supremacist. Right. So he said, you're a white guy now for all intents and yeah. purposes. Right. And like, I, I did that there. And then we read a piece on the show, not so long after I got out, that was like the, like they were talking about this, like Hispanic white supremacy and stuff like that. It's like, it, it almost sounds ridiculous at first. And so you realize like, okay, you know, maybe maybe it's not right. These people more identify with us than uh, than a lot of white people do, frankly, right? <laughs> and so yeah, you know, yeah, there's, you know, it's actually funny. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, and the other but, thing I've talked about before too is like, you know, if if you're thinking of things as in terms of like a, a purposeful eugenics program, like maybe maybe there's uh maybe there's rungs of this thing as well, you know. And I hate to talk about people who I who are ostensibly on my side, like in a turn that makes you sound like a second class citizen or something like that. But if the goal is a white, if the goal is white, okay, and then there are people who are less white, maybe there's like a white core and there there's like a white-ish outer rim or something, you know. And then you know it sort of radiates outward, and 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 the world gets whiter as time goes forward. And like I'm I'm all for that type of thing. Um, I just I just what what you're saying to me sounds dangerously close to this. Um, this blurring of the definition, and I'm I'm skeptical of doing that. Shall we say? No, yeah, no, I could understand. You know, you don't have like the experience, like for example, that someone like myself or other Cubans, like for example. So I, you know, you don't have like the firsthand experience. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so it could be something that you know you might be a little bit skeptical to, um, which I which I could understand. But it's just like you know, it's one of the things that you know my my grand my grandparent my dad's uh, grandparents come directly from Spain, descend from Spain, which is a European nation. You know, it right. was actually one of the most powerful empires at one time. Yeah. So it's definitely it's puzzling to me that sometimes that when we I know that the term Hispanic is such a broad term. You know, it, it's such they lump every 
uh, type of like, you know, Central Americans, South Americans, uh, African, you know, uh, Spanish all together. And it's it's unfair because then the actual white uh, Hispanics kind of have to be lumped in with the others. Yeah. But, you know, but this is the this is the case that people make, too, about like um, um, a, a, about race mixing. Right. Because what happens is, you know, sort of the Spaniards come over like and it is like uh, I read this in the George Lincoln Rockwell. And I don't know exactly how accurate it is, but it seems intuitive to me. Right. They're like, OK, you know, North America was settled by, you know, Englishmen or whatever. Right. And 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 uh, they came over here and they and they bring their wives with them. Right. The Spaniards were in like South America and they didn't bring their women and they just like mated with the indigenous peoples or whatever. OK. And so they have um, they, they are, you know, a darker skinned people than uh, your traditional, your typical North American prior to 1965 or whatever. And it, it creates a blurring of the lines, which which you know, understandably makes certain people uncomfortable, right? Um, but I also right. recognize, like you're saying, that like, okay, uh, a, a certain number of people, you know, it, you know, probably have, uh, you know, as much Euro, they have more, there are certain people with more European DNA in uh, uh, south of the United States southern border than others, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, thing yeah, worth considering. Example, I did my ancestry. Oh, you did the ancestry thing? Yeah, and I got over fifty percent European. Well, there you go, right? But that's over fifty percent, right? And so when this guy calls up and tells me you got to be a hundred percent, I'm like, no, it's hey, that's gonna fuck me over. Fuck you, right? Okay, you know how yeah. how far how far out from one hundred percent do we go? And I, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that people are gonna get skeptical by the time we get to forty. You know what I mean? And what, whatever my opinions of it might be, I'm going to go ahead and guess that people who put themselves in a great deal of danger in order to form an ethno state who upended our entire system of government in the hundreds of years, you know, are probably going to are probably going to have pretty strong opinions well before we get to 30 percent. Right. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. But uh, look, I, as far as I'm concerned, you're a good guy, man. And, and, and I hope uh, I hope we figure out a, a way for everybody to get what they want. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I, I look forward, hopefully, to getting the acceptance and hopefully my kids being able to get the acceptance into the ethno state. Okay.